What is going on guys? Nathan here with another Team Fortress 2 gameplay commentary. You're playing as the SPI on CP Egypt. Today we are going to be talking about the best cloak for spy. Now before we get into this commentary, let me just say that I am talking about the pub spy. And the pub spy is different from competitive spy in that pub spies tend to go for a lot more kills. Like, that's just kind of your goal and pubs is to just mess around and have fun. And to do that, you just kind of get a lot of kills. But in competitive spy, you want to go for the more important kills, such as medic, heavy, demo, etc., etc., um, which might mean that you might be using a different cloak. So we're going to talk about pub spy here, going for all of the stabs. Uh, put in your own meme there. So anyway, <laughs> uh, my suggested cloak, and this is all in my opinion, uh, let me just repeat that, is the regular default Invisiwatch, or Quackenbert, or Enthusiast's Timepiece, depending on what you have for a backpack, my personal favorite is the Quackenbert because it's a duck, and who doesn't want a freaking duck on their watch, heck yes. Anyway, so the reason why I suggest the default Invisiwatch is because it's kind of, uh, elimination of the other cloaks. Now let me just go through the other cloaks here. You have the Cloak and Dagger and the Dead Ringer, as most of you should know. The reason why I don't use the Cloak and Dagger is that while it is very tempting to ha basically have infinite cloak as long as you stand still, asterisk, um, the, the Cloak and Dagger does not allow you very much mobility while being concealed, of course. If you want to run around disguised and not, you know, be cloaked, then go for it, but I prefer a very, very sneaky playstyle in that I am not seen very much because I've found that my playstyle really suffers when I am being discovered by enemies. Now, uh, so once again, the Cloak and Dagger does not allow for much mobility. It is very fun to just sit there and have infinite invisibility, and by that I mean like you can just kind of just sit there and pick and choose your kills. You know, maybe you're sitting outside of their spawn, you see a skull walk by, you're like, no, I'm going to pass up that kill, and you can just sit there in, in full infinite invisibility, and that is great. That That's really fun, but... Um, which, I mean, it's it's good that you can pick and choose your kills, because if you want to kill a medic, then go for it. You know, you just wait for the medic to walk out, and you're good. But, um, the opportunity to cost of just sitting there and waiting for the perfect kill, to me, is not worth it. So instead, I like to go with the Invisiwatch, which allows me a lot more mo mobility. Plus, let's mention ammo. Ammo is a very important aspect of the Invisiwatch, because while it does allow for basically triple to quadruple to quintuple the mobility of the Cloak and Dagger, you can also pick up ammo along the way, which that is not to be neglected. I mean, you like you can pick up a full ammo pack midway through walking across half the map and you're still good. Like you could just stay cloak walking across the entire map. So, I am a huge fan of the Invisiwatch in that regard. Uh, let's move on to the Dead Ringer. The Dead Ringer is more the reason why I don't use it is more of my past experience rather than being potentially good or bad. I know a lot of competitive players use Dead Ringer, but I just tend to suffer with the playstyle it offers. Um, it is good that the Dead Ringer allows you to get out of dangerous situations and or it allows for a different playstyle in which you try to get hit by an enemy so that you can activate the cloak and, and you know, believed to be dead. However, I have found that a lot of players suggest Dead Ringer off the bat. You could be using Invisiwatch while the enemy is watching you, like, I don't know, run into an enemy and you could see uh, the outline of the cloak and people still believe that you dead ring now you know, Obviously those people are really dumb because they don't know the difference be between cloaks But it's like dead ringer is so known in today's tf2 that I don't find it to be that viable of an option And I'm not like talking about entirely relying upon the enemy's ability to believe that I have died It's just that like <laughs> the cloak that the dead ringer offers you even when activated is so minuscule and it the playstyle that the dead ringer relies on tends to be your like it has to rely upon your movement very much in that um you have to manage when you uncloak um how f you know being hidden before your dead ring uncloaks i don't know i'm just not really a fan of the dead ringer like i can't give a specific explanation even though i'm trying really hard here but it's just the dead ringer has not suited me in the past i'm just not a fan of it uh, it, it kind of seems like if you activate your dead ringer, you're all of a sudden under this like stress to like not be seen or get in this perfect situation by the time that you uncloak. Plus, you have to worry about the sound that the dead ringer makes. And let us not forget that the dead ringer was nerfed in this past, I don't know, pff, 
like six months or so. I don't remember when that update came out. But um, the Dead Ringer, because you even uh, the cloak like degenerates as you get hit by more damage, that just kind of adds to the meh factor of the Dead Ringer now. And I'm not saying it's it's not entirely viable. I mean, people can be freaking geniuses with the Dead Ringer. It's just once again, it doesn't really fit my playstyle and. Um, even before the nerf to the Dead Ringer, I thought the cloaks were pretty even. Like, the Dead Ringer, people said was OP a lot, and I didn't necessarily agree with that because the differences in the distance that you actually travel with the Dead Ringer equipped or like activated quote unquote um is not that much different and to me like the, the big thing about the Dead Ringer is whether people know that you died or not and Either way, like, each Dead Ringer, the enemy would know if you Dead Ring or not. So, I don't know. Dead Ringer is just, pfft, eh, not really a fan. Um, and that leaves the Cloak and Dagger and the Viz Watch. And like I said, I am a very mobile spy. And you should be, too. You know, you can't just sit around waiting forever for the perfect kill. Although, that is what you should do sometimes if you want to get those important classes. But... Uh, you know, mobile spies are typically more effective. Look at this perfect spawn camp I have going, and then this soldier comes, and I don't know what to do. I'm like, should I stab him? Should I not? Obviously, I shouldn't, but then I just stand there and hope that he only fires at me once, and I died. So that's why I'm a bad spy. Uh, but I can talk intelligently about the spy, but I'm really just not a bad, or I mean not a good spy in the end. I think I end this round going 16 and 2, and actually I go heavy at the end here, you'll see in a little bit, because I think someone on the blue team must have been coordinating through the mic to push up, push up, push up, motherfuckers, and, uh, I actually go heavy to stem their huge push actually they, they they did make some good ground and i think somebody got on the cap point eventually but um so yeah i mean j you know you got to take into account what map you're playing on for the cloak that you choose also whether you're going for competitive or pub um i mean egypt is a very spy friendly map but like a notorious uh map that's not good for spy for me personally is something like granary because it seems like the enemy is always clustered up in those small maps and on uh payload especially actually I, I i do like playing spy on payload because while enemies may cluster around the cart uh, payload maps are typically huge and that means that you have a lot of routes to go unseen and also get kills you know one-on-one -on -one, so stuff like that so uh maybe you know in terms of actually whether you want to play spy or not t take into the the map uh, or take into account the map that you're playing on um, and here I'm gonna be the brass beast heavy this is actually left over from uh, I believe we were doing a spawn camp on PL Badwater and like three of our heavies were brass beast and we were spawn camping them so hard we were just a wall of brass beast heavies so unfortunately I don't have the minigun equipped which I would normally so don't uh, just be like oh my god brilliant such a noob not using the default minigun because it's so hard to play heavy guys we all know that um, so I guess that's all I have to talk about today um, in terms of the spy and or what's going on. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, please leave a rating. I always appreciate it. And if you want to subscribe, that is always welcome as well. If you are new around here, then welcome. Welcome to the channel of brilliance. See what I did there with the wordplay on, on my name and puns and stuff. I should really stop talking now because the round's over and the video's pretty much over. So why am I still talking? I will see you guys later. Peace out.